Hello everyone, this will be the last video of the Wutai series. We'll be getting domain admin in the second domain via shadow credentials and after this point there are two more domains to compromise which I will leave to you. So remember last time we got access to the first machine in the EU Unon domain with this user SAD West who also had an account in the work domain and they shared a password. So now we're on this new machine and need to get some awareness. Um, first of all, we are an administrator, so we can try to dump LSAS or look at DP API secrets. And I'm going to do the second one. And in order to do that, we are going to use sharp DP API and then machine triage. All right, this already finished. And if we scroll up a bit, you can see that we actually get an entry here. There's a scheduled task running as SVC backup, and this is a domain account. So let's store these credentials for now. And then if we go to Bloodhound, we can look for this account because it's a domain account, right? And see if it can do anything interesting. And you can already see um, it has 19 reachable high value targets, and this is always like very interesting. So let's see. It has generic all on an OU, um, the service OU, which contains an account that can DC sync the domain. So this is interesting. And on the other hand, it's also a member of key admins, um, which can add key credential links to the DC. So what does this mean? Um, if we go here, Bloodhound gives us a nice description with the ability to write this attribute on the domain controller. And this allows us to create shadow credentials and we can then authenticate as the principal using Kerberos PK in it. And I'm going to explain what this is in a bit, but essentially we write this attribute and then we can authenticate as the DC. And when we are the DC, we are allowed to DC sync, right? Because that's what DCs do. All right, so what are shadow credentials and how can this be used? Um, Essentially, this is a bit similar to like public key authentication on SSH, um, only that we have this MSDS key credentialing attribute instead of the authorized keys file. And internally it works a bit different, but the gist is you generate an RSA key pair and you can add your key in this attribute. And this is how the AD knows um, which key allows to authenticate against this account. For the details, um, you can, can read this blog post, but yeah, that's like the simplified version of it. What's the requirements? Well, you need um, essentially ADCS installed. I think there are also some other ways, but if you have ADCS installed, you don't really have to configure anything, just install it at the roles that are default, and then this attack will work as soon as you have right access to this attribute. And in order to exploit this, we are going to use this tool here called PyWhisker. And yeah, he also has like the requisites here. Um, you need to be at a certain domain function level. Um, domain controller must have its own certificate and keys. Okay, so I said ADCS, but it can also be some other things here. Um, and we must have write access over this attribute that we have. And then we can write our value there and authenticate as the user. So let's try to do that. All right, the first thing we're going to do is run PyWhisker here to list the attribute. So we have here the domain, we have the username, and we have the target, which is a domain controller. And if we look here in Bloodhound, we can see that this is a domain controller, right? So let's try that. Okay, um, it tells us that the attribute is empty or we can't read it. We can probably read it, um, so probably empty. Um, so now what we want to do is, of course, write it and generate keys so we can do this public key authentication, right? So the command for that one is very similar. Um, it's all the same here, only instead of action list, we do action add, give it the key name, and we want to export it in PEM format. And this looks good. It created a certificate. Um, it created this key credential and wrote it to the attribute. All right. And if we now do list again, we should get something back here. Yes, there's something linked here. So now we have written this um, attribute and now we should be able to get a TGT for this user, which is a domain controller, right? And it's also telling us how to do that and linking us a tool here that we need to use. 
So we can just um, download this tool here and then we do, let me just get it to the top here again. We run this get TGT PK in it um, with the certificate we just generated. And then, yeah, we give it the domain and the domain controller and we want to generate the CC cache file. All right, this looks good. Looks like we got one. Let's see. Yep, so now let's export it. Now maybe give it the path to, yes, the ticket is now loaded. And there's yet another tool called get nt hash, which would allow us to um, even get the ntlm hash of this user. And this one was actually here in the same repository that was linked and where we got the other tool from. So now we can do proxy chains and then get nt hash.py. Then we need to give it the key, um, which we have here. And also we have to give it the domain and machine name again. All right, now we can run this and we get indeed the NTLM hash of the machine account. This is a machine account, so this will change like every 30 days or whatever is configured in the Active Directory, but it's good enough for now. Okay, so the only thing really left now that we have the NTLM hash is to do a secret stump on the domain controller, right? We're going to do this the same way we did it before. Um, just DC, we give it the username. Um, remember, you have to put a dollar sign here. Otherwise this won't work, like this, then the IP, and of course we also have to provide the hash, we just got this one here, and then we want to save this as eu unon.hashes, and this indeed works, we get the domain dump. All right, we dumped the whole domain. Now all that's left to do is basically connect to the domain controller and read the flag for the domain. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, this also finishes the Wutai series, like I said in the beginning. So the last steps I leave to you. And as always, if you want to try out the labs, check out onelab.com. Thank you.